So if you remember the early days of the beef between Drake and Kendrick Lamar, then you remember when Kendrick told Drake, Well, we all know why Kendrick was telling Drake to go push a T, but why was he saying he was gonna go inherit some beef between Drake and Pharrell? Well, Pharrell, without his consent, was dragged into the entire beef between Drake and Pusha T, a beef that reached its peak when Pusha T exposed Drake for having a son with a French former adult film star, and Pharrell was unwillingly dragged into it. Five years after Drake forfeited out of his battle with Pusha T, when Drake bought over two and a half million dollars worth of Pharrell's old jewelry that he sold in his own online auction. And then Drake sneaked this Pharrell about it as if it was some kind of skating chess move that Drake put two and a half million dollars in Pharrell's pocket for old jewelry that he didn't want anymore. Then he acted like he melted down all the jewelry as if again it's some scathing move to buy something someone's intentionally selling and then destroy it just to spite them. And Pharrell, two years later, has finally actually commented on this entire situation. We're going to break down what he said. We're going to break down the real reason why Pharrell is involved in this beef in the first place. And it's funny because with all these different rappers who have been beefing with Drake over the last few months, with all these different disses that have been thrown out against Drake, Pharrell has taken the approach of what I like to call killing Drake with kindness, which is in classic Pharrell fashion. Pharrell has always come across as a nice person was thrown into the crossfires between Pusha T and Drake against his will. And I mean, the guy made the song happy. You can't try to act tough to a guy who made a song like that. But years before Pharrell made the song happy, he made a song called What Happened to That Boy. He produced the beat and it was a collaboration between Birdman and The Clips, which is one of the most legendary hip hop duos comprised of Pusha T and his brother, No Malice. We're just giving a lot of context here. So if you guys didn't know, Birdman is the owner of the record label Cash Money, which previously signed both Drake and Lil Wayne. And despite its title as Cash Money Records, the record label was notorious for not paying artists or producers their rightful share of the cash money that they were owed for the songs that they did with the label. And that was no different than the song What Happened to That Boy, which really should have been titled What Happened to That Money, because after Pharrell produced the beat, after the song became a hit, Pharrell nor the clips received their proper compensation for that record. So believe it or not, before the Drake and Pusha T beef, before Drake redirecting that Pusha T beef to Kanye and Pharrell, and before Kendrick inherited that Pusha T beef onto himself and destroying Drake, all of this conflict was rooted in Pharrell and Pusha T not getting paid by Birdman for that record what happened to that boy. And boy was this a weird time for Birdman, Drake, and Lil Wayne. Back in 2002 when this song was released, Birdman and Lil Wayne were kissing each other on the lips. A teenage Drake was allegedly in a Pharrell fansite forum online called Star Trek, where he was allegedly interacting with Neptune's fans and sought recognition for his talent. However, his presence on the forum was met with mockery and ridicule, particularly when he shared snippets of his early tracks. According to the Neptune's fan page, this Star Trek forum that Drake was on back in 2002 allegedly laid the groundwork for what would later become a simmering animosity. An animosity that wouldn't solely derive from Drake or anyone from his Young Money Cash Money camp, but it was an animosity that would be equally reciprocated on the opposing side, as after Pharrell was not paid for the What Happened to That Boy record, he allegedly vowed to never work with Cash Money artists again. According to Ebro, this is what started the tension initially. If you look back, Pharrell never worked with a Cash Money artist after this moment. So Pharrell held on to the fact that he never got paid. I'm told. And Birdman himself had said, this was the first and last time he ever worked with Pharrell on a record. Pharrell put that together. Pharrell did the beat. Pharrell wanted to work with me and I wanted to work with him. That was the, really the first producer I worked outside of Fresh. Pharrell kind of came with the hook too. Bro. Like, part he, he was like, Stunner, you do that part and get them to do that part. But that was a magical moment. That was the only time I got to work with Pharrell, but it was definitely a match. And honestly, Burbank kind of sounds a bit sad about this, but not as sad as Lil Wayne would be a few years later when Pharrell refused to send him any of his clothing. And yes, before this beef led to Drake being exposed for hiding a kid, it really started escalating in around 2006 when Lil Wayne requested some billionaire boy's clothing from Pharrell. That is the name of the clothing brand that Pharrell co-founded with the Japanese fashion designer Nigo, who also created the iconic streetwear brand called Bape. At the time, these two clothing brands, Billionaire Boys Club and Bape, were dominating hip-hop fashion, and along with the colorful, flashy, cartoony chains that Pharrell was rocking back in the day, which will play an important role in the story very shortly, his fashion choices and clothing designs were a staple of hip-hop stylistic supremacy. And before Lil Wayne was rocking zebra 
leggings and furry boots, he wanted to dress just like Pharrell. He allegedly asked Pharrell for some billionaire boys club pieces, to which Pharrell said no, likely due to the animosity he was harboring over the fact that Birdman never paid him for their collaboration. I'm told behind the scenes, Lil Wayne used to ask for billionaire boys club gear and was told no, and went and wore it in a video anyway, and they was like, yo, we told you basically not to wear our stuff, and it was like an issue. So, as a form of get back, Lil Wayne wore both Billionaire Boys Club and Bape merchandise in the Hustler Music music video back in 2006. And he also wore a Bape hoodie on the cover of a Vibe magazine issue back in 2006 as well. This prompted Pharrell and the Clips to drop the record Mr. Me Too, which was a braggadocious anthem where Pusha T, Malice, and Pharrell assert their dominance and originality in the rap game calling out imitators who mimic their style and success, with no malice rapping bars like people bite the style from the shoes to the watches. This prompted Complex to ask Lil Wayne about the song later that year where they said, I'm sure you've heard the clips are coming back right now, and one of the things they've been saying is, like, yo, all these dudes, now they do the babe and the white powder rap, but before that, that was us, we were the ones who started that. How do you feel about that? And Lil Wayne replied by saying, I don't do no white powder rap. He's not talking about me. I don't gotta talk about no white powder or no effing babes. I got my own shoes. So stop coming at me with that BS, man. That's how you get beef started. I don't see no guys like that. You're talking to the best. Talk to me like you're talking to the best. I don't see no effing clips. Come on, man. Wheezy, man. They have to do a song with us to get hot, B. What happened to that boy? Come on, man. Don't do that, dog. This is a legend you're talking to right here. Who the F is Pharrell? Do you really respect him? That guy wore bapes and you guys thought it was weird. I wore it and you guys thought it was hot. Come on, man. Come on now. He then kind of threw a shot at the interviewer by saying, Pharrell walked around with guys that look like you and everyone thought he was crazy. If I did it, you guys are going to think these guys are killers. And there's a fashion and hip hop forum that dates all the way back to 2006 where a bunch of bait fans were talking about Lil Wayne's comments. And there was some funny discussion around this topic. One of the users by the name Chrissy2008 posted in December 2006 saying, Actually, many people didn't even know what Bape was until Lil Wayne rocked his first hoodie. Another user by the name of Stoplian replied to him by saying, You're a piece of crap, case closed. Another user by the name of Break and Azin had an interesting take about the whole fashion debacle when he said, I think Lil Wayne brought it to the hood, but Pharrell kept it fresh. I mean, Wayne made it into a gangster wear with the baggy pants, huge shirts, etc. But I don't think Bape was meant to be worn like that, mainly because of Pharrell and Nigo's style, which is more fit and skaterish. And regardless of who made Bape hot or if Lil Wayne was biting Pharrell in the clips, that complex interview prompted Pusha T to throw an onslaught of disses against Wayne in the late 2000s. But by 2009, it seemed like Pharrell retracted his stance on never working with a cash money artist because him and Lil Wayne actually collaborated on the song called Yes in 2009. <laughs> Sacks with it was a leaked record that never came out officially, so maybe Pharrell didn't clear it because he didn't want to deal with Birdman not paying him again. But around that same time in 2009 emerged a young Drake. And while fans in Pharrell forums in 2002 allegedly did not mess with Drake's music, by 2009 most of the world loved Drake. And Drake, funny enough, came in the game, letting the world know how much of a fan he was of Pharrell and Pusha T's music. He listed the Clips Lord Willen album as one of his favorite albums of all time, which was majority produced by Pharrell. Clips Lord Willen. I used to listen to oh. that record down. My God. I love that record. And he even bought a used Pusha T microphone off of eBay back in 2007. 20, I was looking for like autograph stuff from Clips because I was like a really, really big Clips fan. Wow. This guy in Virginia that supposedly had a, a microphone that Pusha T used during the show. It was like plastic. Oh, wow. But it had his autograph. I used to pretend I was doing interviews on the red carpet and uh, perform all the clip songs in my basement with the mic. Pusha T obviously didn't care about the love that Drake showed him because he redirected the target from Lil Wayne onto his protege Drake and began sneak dissing him all throughout the early 2010s, most notably on the song Exodus 23-1, where he was talking to both Lil Wayne and Drake, saying that no matter how much money they made for the cash money roster, just like Birdman not paying Pharrell, Birdman was not loyal to Lil Wayne and Drake and would rip him off the same way he ripped the clips and Pharrell off in the early 2000s. That's where he rapped the famous bar, you're signed to one guy that's signed to another guy that's signed to three guys, now that's bad luck. That was the same bar that Kendrick rapped once he inherited this beef from Pharrell and Pusha T. And Pusha T's involvement in this entire beef is a story for another video because there were tons of shots thrown back and forth from both parties. But we're going to keep it mainly focused on Pharrell in this video. We'll kind of skim over the details of the whole Pusha T debacle. Basically, Lil Wayne replied to the Exodus diss by saying F Pusha T and anybody that love him. Pusha T thought that Lil Wayne's diss track was so weak that it didn't even warrant a response from him. 
Then Drake came back in 2016 with the song Two Birds, One Stone, where he called out Pusha T, casting doubt on the authenticity of stories told by both Pusha T and Malice in most of their early music. Rapping the bars, but really it's you with all the drug dealer stories that gotta stop though, you made a couple chops, now you think you chop -o. if you ask me though, you ain't lining in the trunks with the kilos, you're bagging green with all your guys watching Pacino, like this is what we need to be on but never went live, you're middleman in this stuff, you were never those guys, I can tell cause I look most of you dead in your eyes, and you're trying to tell that story for the rest of your lives. Push a T clap back with infrared where he questioned Drake's pen, rapping, how could you ever write your wrongs when you don't even write your songs? Or it was written like Nas, but it came from Quentin, which was the ghostwriter who wrote several tracks off Drake's If You're Reading This It's Too Late project. Drake then dropped Duffy Freestyle where he redirected the beef at Kanye West, the owner of the good music record label that Pusha T was signed to at the time, and telling Pusha T that you're older than the guy that you're running behind. And then Pusha T put a stop to the whole thing by dropping the story of Added On where he rapped, drug dealing aside, ghostwriting aside, let's have a heart to heart about your pride. And from there, Drake publicly backed out of the beef with Pusha T, but in classic Drake fashion, he would continue to throw subliminal disses at Pusha T, at Kanye West, at Pharrell for the next four or five years. Most notably on the 2019 track, Omerta, Drake rapped, I plan to buy your most personal belongings when they're up for auction. Then sure enough, by 2022, Pharrell, the guy who brought Pusha T in the game, the guy who allegedly vowed to never work with a Cash Money Records artist for the rest of his career, put all of his iconic jewelry up for auction, and Drake ended up purchasing around two and a half million dollars worth of it. Then in January of 2023, Drake drops a music video for the song Jumbotron Poppin', where he's wearing all of Pharrell's jewelry, dangling the chains to the camera, doing the same pose that Pharrell used to do with all of those same chains, also flexing a gold PlayStation Portable, aka PSP, that he bought off Pharrell's auction as well. Then that summer, he got on Travis's song Meltdown, threw a bunch of disses out at Pusha T and Pharrell. Most notably rapping the bars, I melt down the chains that I bought from your boss, give a F about all that heritage stuff, implying that he melted all of Pharrell's chains. He also rapped since V not around, the members done hung up the Louis, they're not even wearing that stuff. And that's in reference to the fact that before he passed away, Virgil Abloh was the artistic director of Louis Vuitton. Pharrell was then appointed as the new men's creative director of Louis Vuitton, and Drake here is basically saying since Virgil Abloh left and Pharrell replaced him, Louis Vuitton is no longer as popular. And it's funny that 20 years later, the shots they're throwing are still related to fashion. It went from Pusha T and Pharrell clowning Lil Wayne for copying their style wearing babe clothing to Drake clowning Pharrell for not making as relevant designs for Louis Vuitton as Virgil Abloh was. It's funny because just a few years before that in 2019, Drake hopped on a remix to Pharrell and Rihanna's song Lemonade and leaked it on his OVO Sound radio station. And with that song not getting an official release on streaming platforms, I could imagine it's for the same reason that the Yes song with Lil Wayne and Pharrell didn't get released officially as well. Pharrell likely didn't want to do business with Drake's record label Cash Money, so Drake sneak dissed him by leaking the song on his radio station. He pulled the same sneak dissing tactic towards Kanye West in 2021 where he leaked Kanye's Life of the Party song featuring Andre 3000 where Kanye was throwing jabs at Drake. And throughout all this, Pharrell went on the Drink Champ show. He was asked about Pusha T's beef with Drake, and in classic Pharrell fashion, he only had nice things to say. He said, I didn't want to see it go that way. That didn't make me happy. I hate to see what Pusha T and Drake are going through, or what they went through. I hated to see all of it, every bit of it. It wasn't good. Pusha T didn't tell me, because he knows I would have stood in front of him as much as I could. But he's a different kind of person. He's a Taurus. And Taurus people, when you feel like a line is crossed, you take off the gloves. That's where your brain is at. You know what I'm saying? Whereas Drake, he's a Scorpio, and they never forget. It's just the worst combination of two people who are very pure and very loyal to the people they love. It still breaks my heart to this day because I would have loved to have heard those guys on a song together or heard a joint project together. I would have loved to see that. By the way, Pusha says Drake got bars. When Drake makes something that's amazing, we talk about it all the time. And as far as Pharrell's relationship with Drake at the time of this interview, he said, we've talked several times. I love Drake, even in the middle of all that stuff. He said super nice things and kind things to me on the DM and in public. Neither one of them are into problems. They don't like it. Like, it's unnecessary. But they're both people who, when they feel like they're being pushed to the limit, they gotta do what they gotta do. And as far as rap beef in general, and if there should be rules or if things could be pushed too far, he said, that's the thing with rap. There should be rules, but there's kind of no rules. And people will do and say anything. I didn't want to see this. I just think they're two super talented guys. Black people, especially black men, we haven't had it so easy in this country. Even in Canada, it's not been so easy for black men there. I want to say, you guys are both living great lives. And sure, there's been some overstepping on both parts. I'll say, we're better than this. We're too zoomed in right now. 
we need to zoom out and see the bigger picture. We're stronger together. Keep in mind now, this interview was three years before Drake bought Pharrell's chains and then taunted him about melting them down in Travis Scott's song Meltdown. And then we get to 2024 when Kendrick Lamar releases Euphoria, where he tells Drake that he doesn't like that Drake is dragging someone so unproblematic as Pharrell into this beef unnecessarily. So he raps, I don't like you popping stuff at Pharrell. For him, I inherit the beef. To which Drake replies on Family Matters saying, you want to take over for Pharrell? Then come get his legacy out of my house. Meaning that if you want to inherit this beef, then come get all Pharrell's chains that I bought back from my house. In the music video for that Family Matters record, he's also flaunting all Pharrell's jewelry, seemingly implying that he still has unresolved issues with Pharrell. And some people thought this was one-sided, but some people thought that by June of 2024, when Pharrell was on the Despicable Me soundtrack, he had a song called Double Life where he was taking some subliminal shots at Drake. When he rapped, some of your dirt has come to light, lie detector time, hey, what are you hiding? Nothing wrong being private, make sure it ain't wrong. This was right after Kendrick called Drake a PDF file on Not Like Us. So if this was directed at Drake, Pharrell is basically saying here, nothing wrong with living a private life, because if you don't, all of your dirt is going to come to light, like it is right now with Kendrick's Not Like Us record. And a few days back on November 13th, 2024, Pharrell did an interview with GQ magazine, where he spoke about Drake purchasing over $2 million worth of his jewelry that he put on auction, and the thought of him possibly melting all those chains down. As far as Drake buying the chains, Pharrell said, I think beyond all the ongoing things, at the heart of it all, he's a fan of music. He's a fan of the history of what it is, and I happen to be a part of that, and those artifacts are a part of it. Then the interviewer asked Pharrell what he thought of Drake's lyrics on the song Meltdown, and he replied, I guess some things are not for me to understand. When you let things go, a huge part of it is actually letting go, not just of the physical item, but letting go of your connection to what it's supposed to mean or the memory. You're literally letting them go. That was the purpose. It's like when people sell something and they go, I just want to make sure you take care of it because this is my baby. And I'm like, no, no, no. This is not my baby. That's why I'm letting it go. And I think that's the most powerful part of it all is that with Pharrell now being the men's creative director of Louis Vuitton, he's still as engulfed in the fashion world as he ever was. However, he's taking a much different approach, which he emphasizes in this interview as his fashion sense is no longer defined by the flashy, in-your-face, colorful, cartoony designs and jewelry that he used to wear way back in the day when Lil Wayne was trying to copy his style. That's why he put all that old jewelry up for auction, because now he's in a new era, which is more defined by tranquility and some simplicity than it is about the flashy bling, as Lil Wayne would say, that those chains that he auctioned off to Drake represented. And while Pharrell seems to be removing himself from that superficial flashiness or that materialism, Drake inherited all of it and tried taunting Pharrell in the most petty way possible. But instead of clapping back, Pharrell, as I said before, is killing Drake with kindness, trying to spin the situation in a positive light by emphasizing that Drake is a fan of music at the end of the day and attributing his intentions on purchasing Pharrell's iconic jewelry to just being a fan of music and emphasizing that Drake is free to do whatever he wants with those pieces of jewelry because they're no longer attached to Pharrell's identity or legacy. And while Drake mean mugs DeMar DeRozan at basketball games or goes on unfollowing sprees on Instagram, Pharrell is taking the high road, acknowledging Drake's love of the culture and emphasizing that he's at peace and unbothered with whatever antics Drake is trying to bait him with. Pusha T seems to be taking a very similar approach because Drake was just sneak dissing him about two years back on a song called Churchill Downs with Jack Harlow and Pusha T was asked about it and just basically said that it's all the same flows, it's all the same disses that he's heard before, and there's no real reason for him to re-engage in this beef because it's all recycled bars and insults, so it's best to put the past behind them. And as far as Lil Wayne, well, when he's asked about it in interviews, he just seems to not really know what's going on and doesn't remember how the entire situation started. But as far as how it started, this looks like it's going to be the end of it, so let me know what you guys think. Would you like to see another back and forth between the Young Money crew and Pharrell and Pusha T? Do you think that'll be the last time we ever hear of these four engaging in this back and forth? Did Lil Wayne bite the clips and Pharrell? Was Drake petty for buying Pharrell's jewelry? Do you want to see Pharrell come with more bars at Drake on another Despicable Me soundtrack? Let me know in the comments and I will catch you guys in the next one. There's a lot of little nuggets in both of their disses that if it wasn't for these breakdowns and salutes of you know, guys like this, Rapaholics, because I think they directly get it.